Hey everyone, this is Ryan, and I'm going to talk a little bit about the canine teeth. So canines have three major functions. The first is for tearing and holding onto food and other material. The second is for aesthetics. They're usually very visible and smiles. And the third is for canine or interior guidance. And this is when as the teeth are moving lateral, in a lateral direction, either to the left or to the right, both of the cusp tips of, of both canines are touching throughout that movement, ideally, so that the posterior teeth uh, don't clash into each other, so they're not, they're not uh, touching each other in a lateral direction. All right, so one of the main structural components of all canines are that they have one cusp tip, and that will be a staple um, structural feature as we talk about the topography of the canines from all five aspects. So let's start with the, uh, this is a picture of the maxillary right canine, the right maxillary canine, and this is a facial aspect. So similar to the incisor teeth, it has two developmental depressions uh, separating the three facial lobes from one another. The middle facial lobe is always biggest. In this case, it's uh, very expanded, very convex. So this tooth is convex um, all the way from the crown to the root because of that expanded middle facial lobe. Um, from And then this is another very important uh, concept. From each cusp tip, you will have four cusp ridges. So this uh, going down the facial um, the facial aspect of the crown is the facial cusp ridge and then we have a mesial cusp ridge on this side and then a distal cusp ridge on this side and we'll talk about the lingual ridge in a little bit. So when this tooth uh, first erupts the distal cusp ridge is always longer than the mesial but as this tooth wears down from occlusion over time, this mesial cusp ridge will end up being um, larger over time. So the for proximal contacts on the mesial side is at the junction of the incisal and middle thirds, and then uh, from the distal side, it's in the middle third of the tooth. Um, another thing to note about the, the cusp ridges here, those cusp ridges make up about one-third of the incisocervical length of this entire crown, which is pretty pretty impressive. It makes the tooth look pretty pretty wide mesiodistally, even though it is slightly longer facial-lingually. Um, another thing to notice, one of the most important features of this tooth is this distofacial concavity, which we'll talk about a little in a little bit. There's also a little bit of a concavity on the mesial side as well. The root continues uh, pretty straight and parallel, and the, the root tip classically points in the distal direction. Okay, so from the lingual, lingual aspect, we see um, this large cingulum, which is uh, a maxillary anterior trait. All those teeth have large cingulums. All of them have pretty, pretty distinct marginal ridges. Uh, this tooth is certainly no exception. Then we have the, those cusp ridges up here, some thicknesses. And then that lingual ridge is a huge a clue that we're dealing with a with a canine tooth, especially the maxillary canine tooth, has a huge lingual ridge. And this topography results in um, triangular fossa on either side of that lingual ridge. Now going down the root, um, as we saw in teeth like the, the central maxillary incisor, uh, this, this root is going to taper lingually so that the tooth can fit in the dental arch as it curves around. Now moving on to the mesial aspect, I'm just going to draw a line 
bisecting this root. I should do it a little bit more this way. Um, you'll see that one of the most important features of the maxillary canines is that this cusp tip favors the facial direction. It is facial to a line bisecting the root from a proximal view. Uh, what else do we see? We see a little bit of a, a mesial uh, developmental depression on, on the mesial aspect. Um, and the root's pretty straight coming out of that, um, coming out from the crown. And then if we move over to the distal side, we see a very deep distal root flute there, deeper than the mesial. And we see this distofacial concavity. So let's move over to the incisal view, which you can see quite a few of these features. We see the convexity of the, of the facial, middle facial lobe and the, and the mesial side. And this is mesial and this is distal. And we see this really well from the incisal view, this distal pinch or this distal outgrowth here. Uh, that results in that distofacial concavity and also a distolingual concavity as the tooth is reaching out and turning to fit into the dental arch. Um, here's the cusp tip. It's a little bit mesial of center. Uh, it's also a little bit facial of center, if we remember from the mesial view. And you can also see the, you'll see the cingulum, you'll see the lingual ridge from this view as well. And uh, just important to note that the cross-section at Halfway through the root is going to be an oval oval shape with a little bit um, of concavity um, going down. Okay, great. And let's move on to the mandibular canine. So here we have the right mandibular canine, um, which is tooth number uh, 27. Uh, here as well, we're going to see those two developmental depressions and the, the middle facial lobe is going to be biggest once again. So we'll get some convexity, not as much as the maxillary canine, but quite a bit. Um, we'll have those proximal contacts. Um, and the proximal contacts, let me just make sure, um, will be, for this canine, will be in the incisal third on the, the mesial side. And then it'll go quite... Far down, relatively farther down in the middle third for the distal side. So if you remember on the, in the mandibular arch, we have those central incisors where the proximal contacts are super high near the incisal edge. Lateral, same thing, they're very high. And then, so that's why it's so high on the mesial side because those embrasures are going to be symmetrical. And then it swings way down low because we have this um, big... Um, concavity and convexity thing we'll talk about. Okay, so the mandibular tooth um, has has these has a one cusp. As a canine, it has one cusp. And then the mesial has a mesial cusp bridge and a distal cusp bridge. And this time, the distal, distal cusp bridge is uh, longer than the mesial cusp bridge, which is the same, but when undergoing occlusal contact, this distal um, cusp bridge is going to wear down over time. So that was opposite from the maxillary. The maxillary, the mesial cusp bridge is wearing down. This time, the distal cusp bridge will wear down uh, be because of occlusion. Um, and also different, this, these cusp bridges only take up about one third of the incisal cervical length. Uh, sorry, only take up one fifth uh, of the incisal cervical length as opposed to one-third in the maxillary canine. So that makes the mandibular canine look more narrow and a bit longer. And this is true. This is um, one of the longest incisal cervical um, teeth we have. And um, the root is also fairly long. This tooth is about 2.7 centimeters long, and the maxillary canine is usually the longest tooth in our entire dentition at about at around 3 centimeters, uh, roughly. Um, 
So with the mandibular canine, we have this um, really straight, really straight from the on the mesial side, from the crown through the root, almost all the way down. Just very, very straight line there. And then on the distal side, we have this huge concavity here at the cervical third of the tooth. So if we move to the lingual aspect, similar to the maxillary canine, except everything's just smaller. Smaller cingulum, smaller marginal ridges. Still have that lingual ridge. That's a canine feature, but it's smaller. And then those cusp, cusp ridges. Um, still have the lingual taper. Um, still have convexity throughout the root and all that. So that's all similar. Um, Oh, and one other thing I should have pointed out is that the, whereas this maxillary canine, the root tip pointed distally, classically, the mandibular canine, the root tip, um, most of the time points straight. So if we're looking at the mesial view, um, this is like a whale bone or a shark arc. It's just a smooth arc along the facial aspect, uh, the facial side. You can see that from either the mesial or distal view. Uh, we have maybe a little bit of a developmental depression on the root. Um, and then where we see, of course, both of these teeth, we're going to have imbrication lines on the cervical third. So you might see a little bit of a concavity where those imbrication lines are. Um, and then as it did in the... Um, as it did in the... Um, with other anter anterior mandibular teeth, we're going to see that the cusp tip falls lingual. So that's the same for all anterior mandibular teeth. Um, and what else? So we see this um, this disto this distal concavity here on the crown, right across there. Um, really, really evident from the distal view. And then this um, distal uh, root flute is going to be deeper than the mesial. And that, that's pretty universal for most teeth, except for the, the premolars. And then uh, for the incisal, um, you'll see that this uh, we have the me, this time mesial on this side and the distal on this side. And so you'll see that dis, distofacial concavity um, over here. It's a little bit concave. Uh, it's twisting as a distal twist here uh, so it can fit in the mandibular arch. And then again, you're going to get an oval uh, cross section here as well. All right, I hope this video was helpful, and I'll see you all next time.